Admiral Stavridis, uh, House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner, says he's heard some of his Republican colleagues repeat Russian propaganda on the House floor. Let's take a look at his new remarks. We see directly coming from Russia uh, attempts to mask communications that are anti-Ukraine and pro-Russia messages, some of which we even hear being uttered on the House floor. I mean, there are members of Congress today who still incorrectly say that this conflict between Russia and Ukraine is over NATO, which, of course, it is not. Uh, Vladimir Putin having made it very clear, both publicly and to his own population, that his, his uh, view is that this is a conflict of, of a much broader claim of Russia uh, to Eastern Europe, and including claims claiming all of Ukraine territory as, as Russia's. Now, to the extent that this propaganda takes hold, it makes it more difficult for us to really see this as an authoritarian versus democracy battle, which is what it is. President Xi of China, uh, Vladimir Putin himself have identified it as such. We need to stand up for democracy. We need to make certain that, that we know uh, that authoritarian regimes never stop when they, when they start an aggression. Um, Ukraine needs our help and assistance now, and this is a very critical time for the U.S. Congress to step up and provide that aid. Boy, it's so important for him to say that. I'm so glad to yes, hear the chairman say you, that. Just like Chairman McCall Turner. has spoken out clearly and unequivocally in support of Ukraine. And similarly, in an interview about freedom. with Puck News last week, House Foreign Affairs Committee Chairman Michael McFall said, quote, I think Russian propaganda has made its way into the United States, unfortunately, and it's infected a good chunk of my party's base. Admiral Stavridis, can you talk about what's going on here, a big picture, and what the dangers are? Uh, I'd love to. And by the way, uh, the two chairmen you just showed are uh, grown-ups on the House floor. Yeah. I don't agree oh with them gosh. on everything, but in the realm of national security and intelligence, uh, they are the best the Republican Party will produce for those seats. And I've worked particularly with Mike Turner uh, when I was Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. He was the head of the NATO Parliamentary Association connecting our Congress with the parliaments of many of the NATO members. Um, what are the dangers? That's what we ought to focus on right now. Mm -hmm. It is uh, precisely what uh, Mike Turner laid out a moment ago, Chairman Turner. It is the infection, and I use that word deliberately, of big chunks of the Republican Party with propaganda that is flowing not only from Moscow, but increasingly from Beijing. And uh, to the chairman's point, the danger here, Mika, is the fact that Putin will not stop at Ukraine. What's in his head are, at a minimum, the borders of the old Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, which newsflash included Moldova, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, the old borders of Russia. Uh, the latter three, of course, are members of NATO. So uh, the danger here is if we back away from providing this sensible amount of aid to Ukraine, uh, we can count on Vladimir Putin continuing to press forward, and eventually we'll end up in a collision between NATO and the Russian Federation, which, believe me, is a collision we want to avoid, they want to avoid, and the world wants to avoid. So, Ed Luce, yeah. let's bring you uh, in on this. Obviously, we have daily reports from Ukraine about Ukrainian soldiers there running out of ammunition, Russia making slow, grinding, steady progress, real fears of another significant Russian offensive uh, in the months ahead. With this Russian propaganda being banded about the House floor, Congress finally returns today from their recess, this Ukraine aid bill top of mind for many. What's your sense here as to what could come of this? Speaker Johnson has said in recent days he's been more focused on this idea of trying to get some sort of Ukraine aid bill through, but he suggested instead of just taking the Senate bill, which passed with bipartisan support, he might try to create his own, which I unclear that Democrats would go for that. It also means that if there was a coup attempt for Johnson by Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, Democrats might not have any incentive to help them. How do you forecast this turning out? 
that's quite hard to forecast. I mean, you should remember, we're also, we've been talking about the six-month anniversary of the war in Gaza. We're coming up on the six-month anniversary of Speaker Johnson um, being elected. And he inherited um, uh, this um, Ukraine funding need and has done nothing for six months, has just avoided, parried, um, used excuses not to put this to the floor. And if it were put to the floor, as, as uh, Chairman McCall and, um, and Turner show, you would get a clear majority in the House voting for new aid for Ukraine. So I don't know what the precise uh, contours of this package will look like, but I think we have deep grounds um, for scepticism that it won't include things that Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Bobbitt and all the kinds of people who aren't leaving Congress would like to see in that bill. We've got um, a spring offensive coming up from Russia. We've, we've uh, in the past two years, we've talked about a Ukraine spring counteroffensive. The mismatch now in capabilities between the two sides is so great that the only offensive that's in the offing is a Russian offensive, a spring offensive. Mm -hmm. um, and it, we're seeing foretastes of it with nightly drone and missile attacks on cities like Kharkiv, like Odessa. Uh, we see Zelensky saying, look, we're outnumbered from eight, ten to one in terms of artillery, in terms of our air defenses, in terms of all kinds of military equipment that could really easily be recycled um, from the United States to Ukraine. Most of this is old equipment. This is spending on upgrading the American military, stuff right. that's needed anyway. This is 90% spending at home. So I look forward to seeing what Speaker Johnson cut, comes up with. I am very skeptical it will be good faith. Well, hopefully uh, at some point, uh, those who are arguing in good faith about this war, being about authoritarianism versus freedom, uh, the very things that Ronald Reagan uh, devoted his life to and that Republicans are supposed to believe in. Hopefully they'll move in that direction. David, I want to read. Uh, hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.